Welcome back to Cardinadies.org. Today we are going to be doing something of a standalone video. It's a video that can kind of be paired with the Riddle of Induction and the new Riddle of Induction, but it also stands on its own to some degree. And it is the Raven Paradox. Carl Hempel and the Paradox of Confirmation. This is a paradox for anyone that believes in confirming laws through specific instances. So if you have ever seen the instance of someone saying, oh, I can show you that the law of gravity works, let me confirm it by dropping an object over and over again and showing that it always falls to the ground. Well, the Raven Paradox is a problem for someone believes that each of those individual instances actually confirms that hypothesis. So, as I said, the Raven Paradox is a paradox for anyone that believes that particular instances of a law confirm it, but instances of things not referenced by the law do not confirm it. We think that finding a black raven confirms the claim that all ravens are black, but that finding a red fly, for example, does not. The famous Raven Paradox arises from two very intuitive, yet logically contradictory ideas, and Carl Hempel is the one that proposed this paradox and demonstrated that these very intuitive ideas are in fact logically contradictory. The first is that a universally quantified conditional, all ravens are black, all men are mortal, all objects move at or slower than the speed of light, etc., is confirmed by an instance of it. So a particular instance of finding a black raven. If I have the law, all ravens are black, and I find a black raven, it provides some amount of confirmation for the claim that all ravens are black. If I find 10 black ravens, it provides more confirmation, find 100 black ravens, and so on. A mortal man or a slow object, an object that's slower than the speed of light. And they're not confirmed by non-instances. So not, for example, a blue raven, but a red ant, something that doesn't fit either of the criterions. It's not a raven, it's not black, it has nothing to do with it. So it seems like finding a red ant should tell me absolutely nothing about ravens. It seems that finding an immortal time lord, for example, would tell me nothing about whether or not men are mortal, and finding an idea, so not a concrete object, but an abstract object, an idea that's faster than light, wouldn't tell me anything about objects moving at or slower than the speed of light. This is known as Nikod's criterion. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but this is the simple version. So, the other intuitive statement is that if some piece of evidence confirms some hypothesis, then it equally confirms any hypothesis that is materially equivalent to that hypothesis. So, materially equivalent statements have the same truth value and must always have the same truth value. So it seems that if I confirm one statement that necessarily has the same truth value as some other statement, it seems that I'm confirming both statements in doing so. Basically, if all ravens are birds and animals, is confirmed by finding a raven that's a bird and an animal, it would seem that the materially equivalent statement, all ravens are animals and birds, should also be confirmed necessarily by that piece of evidence simply because it confirms the first statement, which is materially equivalent to the second. It seems that materially equivalent statements, since they must have the same truth, they must have, they must have the same truth value, either they're true or they're false, then if one is confirmed, the other must be confirmed. Or all in the set of all the statements that are materially equivalent to each other must all be confirmed. Now, here's the problem. These two statements are, in fact, enough to create a contradiction. All ravens are black, which we can represent logically as for all x, if x is a raven, that means that x is black, is materially equivalent to anything that is not black is not a raven. That's just basic transposition. If you're confused on why that works, check out the 100 Days of Logic for more information. This second statement is confirmed by finding something that is not black and not a raven. Note that the second statement is, if for all x, if x is not black, then x is not a raven. Based on our Nikod's criterion, we say that if I find something that's not black and not a raven, I've confirmed my second statement. But then that means that I've confirmed any statement that's materially equivalent to that second statement. So I've confirmed my first statement as well. But that means that 
Finding a red fly, for example, confirms the claim that all ravens are black, which seems very counterintuitive, and it disobeys Nikod's criterion. It seems very concerning if I can study ravens by looking at a bunch of flies. And it seems strange that one would say that I can confirm the hypothesis I have about birds by looking at insects. That doesn't seem to jive with our notions of science. Now, you might think that this is acceptable, since finding a red fly means that there is one less object out there which could be something that actually falsify the law, like a blue raven. So, imagine you have an urn of balls and cubes and you keep pulling out balls and they're all black and you keep pulling out cubes and they're all red and so you form the hypothesis that all of the spheres are black you might think that if i pull out a cube and it's red it does confirm that because there's a limited number of objects in my urn and so i'm reducing the number of possible falsifiers the possible individual objects which could falsify my theory but the problem is that they should be equally confirmed. All of our materially equivalent hypotheses should be equally confirmed. And it seems there's so many more objects out there which are possibly blue ravens or possibly other things than there are just black ravens. And so it seems that finding one of those individual objects doesn't actually reduce the chance of something being falsified that much. And someone would be just as justified claiming that they are testing hypotheses about ravens by only looking at things that are not ravens, as someone actually looking at ravens. Or someone would be justified in claiming that they are confirming that no concrete object can go fast in the speed of light by looking at abstract ideas that travel faster than the speed of light. This is very counterintuitive. And the idea with abstract concepts brings up a deeper problem. With our urn example, there's a finite number of objects, but it seems that it's quite possible the number of abstract objects that one could conceive of, at least when we start talking about statements and propositions and these things, is infinite. And it's arguably possible that if the universe keeps going on forever, there could be an infinite number of objects that we could discover. And if there are an infinite number of objects, it doesn't seem that important if we discover one that is not a case of being either black or a raven to the probability of our statement that all ravens are black. And yet, according to all of these criterions, it should be the case that that should confirm the fact that ravens are black just as much as finding a black raven does. So it seems to me the best way to deal with this is to throw out one of these ideas. And the most sensible one to throw out seems to be that finding a black raven confirms the idea that all ravens are black. And furthermore, since all ravens are black is also equivalent to all objects are either not ravens or black, look up the logical rule implication here with the 100 days of logic for more information on that, or all x, or all x, it's not the case that x is a raven or x is black. All of these hypotheses, so this one, the claim that if something is not black, then it is not a raven, and the claim that if something is a raven, then it is black, all of those are going to be confirmed by anything that confirms this hypothesis. And we can confirm this hypothesis by just finding a black object or finding any object that's not a raven. From this, we can confirm that no concrete object travels faster than the speed of light by inventing new ideas, which may or may not travel faster than the speed of light. So every time that I think of a new concept, I'm actually proving that objects can't travel faster than the speed of light. That doesn't make sense at all. And it would also confirm the claim that all concrete objects do travel faster than the speed of light. And in fact, any claim about concrete objects that you like. Any time that I invent an abstract idea, I confirm any and all claims about concrete objects. You can confirm the claim that all concrete objects are pineapples by sitting in your room thinking of new abstract concepts. This is a huge problem for the idea that by doing a test over and over and over again, you can confirm some hypothesis. Just because you find 10,000 ravens that are black, 
it doesn't in any way confirm the statement that all ravens are black, because you could have equally found 10,000 things that are not ravens and claimed with the same logical stability that you have then proven that all ravens are black. This seems to me to be quite a significant problem for anyone that believes that particular instances of a law in some way confirm that law. So the next time you see someone try to prove that gravity exists by dropping something over and over again, propose to them the Raven Paradox. As I said, as a skeptic, I'm really concerned about confirmation as an idea. It seems that any criterion like Nikod's is going to be doomed to failure, and hypotheses will forever struggle with being confirmed. But as a skeptic, I don't know for sure. I'm not sure. What do you think? What is your solution to the Raven Paradox? Or are you like me and are skeptical about confirmation? Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.